Hello vinyl community. It's been a while since I've done a video. Sorry about that. Had a brief holiday. Been buying records, been listening to records. And um, hey, that all takes time. Um, today I'm going to talk about some of my recent finds. I'm going to limit it just to sort of psychedelic and progressive stuff really. Um, I'll do the psychedelic stuff first. And um, we've got five day week straw people. Not a uh, saga label origin, original, unfortunately. But this is a, a good reissue on the uh, Italian get back label. Comes as a gatefold, which I'm not sure the original did. And um, it's a decent pressing. Yeah, I mean, the sounds great. Having said that, um, it sounds like Exploito Psych that was knocked out in a day. And then it is. Except it's not, because it's actually knocked out in four hours. That's how long it took uh, the band to record this. Uh, the, the guy in the band people are most familiar with is John Ducan on guitar and vocals, who went on to play the Atomic Rooster. And... Um, I think that was hard stuff. I forget. And um, guitar playing is fantastic, as you'd expect from from John Ducan. Vocals, not so great. A bit weak. Kind of like a, a slightly weak Jack Bruce, I suppose. Um, but then, it's interesting in the, the gatefold here, there's a, a little note from John Ducan. Um, written in 2000, looking back on recording this in 1968 and basically saying he thought it was a load of rubbish, but is pleasantly surprised when he listens back to it now. You know, it's one of these things I imagine he's chucked a few quid to drag a few music musician friends in and um, put out an album to try and cash in on the, the psychedelic thing. Yeah, it came out in 1968, so it's bang in the, the middle of a... Uh, sort of craze for psychedelia, I suppose, um, and it's it's decent. It's got some real acidic guitar on it. Um, it's pop psych edging into sort of hard rock, proto sort of heavy rock, I suppose. And um, I cautiously recommend it. I think it's one of those things. Um, in fact, I have a. A prop here, which is my copy of Galactic Ramble, which is a, you know, a good way of slipping a disc, picking this thing up. But um, great reference guide. And um, in that, they say that this album's frustrating because it could have been really special if some of the ideas had been a bit more developed. And that's absolutely the case. You know, it sounds like something was recorded quickly. It's very good considering but it would be nice to see what could have been done with the stuff on here if the band had had time to develop it I think some of the guys playing on it they were playing some of those songs through for the first time when they recorded it. I mean they recorded the whole album in four hours and apparently they had you know eight nine extra songs left over which I think have appeared on sort of CD reissues since so they were knocking out a song every sort of ten minutes or so so yeah, five day a uh, five day week straw people. Good stuff of its time. Cautiously recommended. Then something I've seen shown on the VC a fair bit. I picked this up at a record fair a couple of months ago, and it's Mark Fry and his Dreaming Vallis album. This came out in 1972. Um, it's only ever released in Italy or was originally released only in Italy. Mark Fry was from the UK. He was age 19 when he put this out. And um, fair play to him, because this is a, a quality bit of music. It's very much in the acid folk sort of realm. Lots of dreamy vocals, acoustic guitar, flute, tabla, sitar. And it's a good horizontal listen. You know, never gets out of first gear. Uh, 
which is kind of what you want. It's it's mellow. It's it's trippy. It's it's a really good listen. Um, it does get pretty psychedelic. I mean, the final track has a backward title, and the entire track is played backwards. It's not just backwards guitar on it. Every instrument is backwards. The whole track is presented back to front. So it'd be interesting to play it the other way around and see what it sounds like. And that's called March On My Brother. Um, this is a, uh, a reissue, obviously, because um, God knows how rare the originals are. Not quite sure what year this came out, but I'm guessing around about early 2000s. It's on the Oak Records label. And uh, they've done a, a good job. Good job of, uh, of pressing it. It's It does sound really very good. So if you're into that kind of acid folk type stuff, so I suppose your sort of touch points would be Donovan at his best, uh, perhaps a bit of early Tyrannosaurus Rex, that kind of thing. This is for you, most definitely. Continuing with the psych, an album that came out in 1969, and at the time there were only 300 copies pressed, and it's Sussex by Bent Wind. Uh, some lovely artwork there. And it's pretty much a, uh, a faithful replica of the original, I think. Right down to the labels. And um, this reissue came out in 2001. It is some heavy underground psych. It's a, a really rough and ready recording. Um, there's fuzz guitar throughout, which is pretty appealing. And it's pretty good. It's not as good as its rarity would suggest. And I mean, this is kind of a legendary album amongst Psych fans. Um, and I suppose a bit like the um, Five Day Week Straw People album. It just feels rushed and under-rehearsed and like what it probably was, which was a bunch of guys scraping enough money together to book some studio time and yeah, record an album's worth of material in a short period of time. And there's a lot of period feel here. Being 1969, it's the heavier end of Psych. Although there's the odd sort of weaker track. The track Hate is pretty feeble, to be honest, with a thin lead vocal to match. But again, cautiously recommended. I haven't had it long enough to really, you know, soak myself in it. But the first couple of listens, I'd say that its rarity makes people want it more than the quality of the music. But uh, glad to have it. And now for something that I have really been enjoying. Um, I'm trying to think where I first... Um, became aware of this album. I think it might have been on um, Matt Sand's channel. Maybe it was the psych professor who was raving about this. But it's um, Frankie Valley in the four, four Seasons. And I know what you think. It's like, really? Psych? But this one album, Genuine Imitation Life Gazette, is a great little bit of... Uh, orchestrated baroque pop psych sort of drawing on the kind of stuff you find on pet sounds or the, the left bank we're doing or the beatles even came out in 1969 so frankie valley was a little bit late to the party but it seems like a reasonably sincere attempt to tap into the whole underground scene in his own slightly reserved way. Uh, it's full of lush, loungy strings and brass arrangements. Um, I say you're not going to get any searing guitar solos or anything on, on this, but it does have that lovely Baroque period feel to it. And um, to be honest, the packaging alone makes it worth getting. I mean, if I take the actual album out of here, you've got like a 
a mock kind of card newspaper and as well as that you actually have a newspaper with the four seasons there looking a bit like um, Italian waiters rather than acid casualties but we'll, we'll let them off and they really are trying to capture the zeitgeist maybe a year too late but they're trying to do it you know like um, this mock newspaper like got the crossword puzzle and it's like yesterday's solution money today's solution peace you know, so they're they're trying to be hippies even if they not completely convincing and you got your comic book in there and then adverts for for food on the back like um, electric prunes 98 cents country joe's fish peanut butter conspiracy so they're dropping all the right names and obviously think they're sort of including themselves in that they think they're part of that scene and to be honest on this album they are they can't seem to decide whether to embrace or mock the counterculture but it seems pretty affectionate on the whole. Um, it's a great listen. I love it. I play this a lot. Like I say, you're not going to get heavy guitar on this, but it's plenty of piano and harpsichord and walking bass lines. It's ambitious. It's progressive in places, and they dispense with love songs for songs for lyrics about racism, civil rights, you know, social liberties, all that kind of thing. And uh, it seems sincere if a little cack hand is in places. Um, the opening track, American Crucifixion, is six minutes plus of ambitious progressive pop. And then the title, t title track, Genuine Imitation Life, has what well, I assume is Frankie Valli sort of abandoning his falsetto vocals at you know, you're probably familiar with from songs like Sherry and Let's Hang On and you know, the big hits they had prior to this. And he actually sounds like David Bowie on that track to me. Um, it's the most psych thing on here with a sort of mildly lysergic atmosphere and trippy uh, studio effects. It even has a sort of White Rabbit Bolero rhythm to it. And um, the, the vocal coder blatantly rips off Hey Jude to the extent that it has to be deliberate and done sort of affectionately. Um, but don't let that put you off. It's a, it's a really good listen. And uh, this has been one of my favourite listens of the past couple of months. I love it. OK, we'll move on from the uh, psych. And I've got a few uh, prog or vaguely prog albums to show you. First off, we've got Apothecary. This came out in 1973. Uh, try and tell you what the label is. Oh, there you go. It's on the Paramount label. And this, in fact, is a, uh, a promo copy. Get right the way up. And this... Um, it's a really good album. I mean, it's, it's a bit slow to, to get going. The opener called Holding You is sort of acoustic and folky and um, second track Sometimes Somewhere it's harder with some decent electric guitar but it does sound like they've put a bit more effort into the vocal harmonies than into the songwriting but then it, it really picks up uh, the Christian has great harmonies and acoustic sort of Crosby, Stills, Nash feel and some Mellotron on there and it finishes with what's probably the best track on side one, which is called Sunset, which has a slightly sort of James Gang feel to it with lots of slide guitar and a, a low rider by war kind of cowbell groove to it. So that's the best of side A. And side B, it just gets better. Um, it kicks off with Say Goodbye to Me, which has more quality slide guitar and superb vocal harmonies. Then uh, People for Peace is melodic folk rock with, with great guitar picking and a sort of Graham Nash style vocal, I suppose. Uh, My Love to You has a sort of medieval style riff, which 
really reminds me of Argos era Wishbone Ash. So if that's your, your kind of thing, it's worth checking out. Uh, but the highlight is probably Fly, which has a sort of quirky time signature, um, which makes it the most progressive thing on here. Again, great harmonies. There's some tubular bells clanging away in the background and a really nice ARP synth solo. Um, so, yeah, it's a slightly mixed bag. It's got a foot in the folk and the, the rock camps. When the two co come together, it really works well. So that's Apothecary. Then, from 1983, some really slick prog here, bordering on AOR, so I can't think the first Asia album. It's Art in America. Again, promo copy of the gold stamp on there. Uh, I don't know whether you can read that, but one of the featured instruments on here is string harp which I suppose it's called that to differentiate it from you know, mouth organ type harp but it is on every single song here this string harp playing very similar circular riffs and to be honest it ruins the album for me it's like listening to an annoying ringtone going off in the background constantly um, and it becomes annoying very quickly which is a shame because the album would actually be really good otherwise but once once I noticed it there it's not difficult to notice because my god they don't exactly hide it low in the mix it uh, gets up your nose got up my nose anyway okay next up from 1979 and a band out of Canada it's true myth and um, this is more polished commercial sounding prog but this is much more successful massive vocal harmonies on here piano features heavily some really good busy technical drumming on here and the guitar is really angular has a, a nice sort of fusion feel to it uh, the vocals are clean um, they remind me a lot of Adrian Bello, uh, his vocals on King Crimson's Discipline album. And this is a really good listen. The songs are you know, all over the place. They don't stay stay in one place for long for long at all. They, you know, time changes are plenty. Lots to hold your interest. Great production on this. You know, it's um, it's got the clarity of the production from the 1980s, albeit a, a year early, but without the horrible dated drum sound. So, yeah, this is definitely one worth checking out. And in fact, I hate to say it, but the sort of OB strip on the front here does um, boast the fact that this is a digital recording, which is a bit of a novelty for the day. Um, and it works in this case it's a it's a really good recording um, and there's the band and there's the OB strip collapsing and uh, like I say this is really highly recommended I can't remember how I came across this I think I was just browsing discogs and saw something I was interested in and then checked to see what else the vendor was selling and this was one of those items and it seems to come with a I think to fit in with the digital theme it's almost like a a computer printout sort of lyric sheet and my copy also comes with um, a promo photo and that is not going anywhere near my walls <laughs> sorry nice to have it but I wouldn't want that lot looking down on me I'm going to wreck it anyway before it gets anywhere. Okay, and finally, from 1972, and I've kept the best for last as far as I'm concerned, although this doesn't get an awful lot of love. Uh, I think this is featured in The Endless Trip, 
and if I'd listened to what they said, I wouldn't have bought it because they don't seem to rate it very highly. And it's Edgewood, a great album from 1972. It's a Ship of Fools. No, it's not Ship of Labour. A bit different. And um, I love this album. I absolutely love it. it. Features ex-members of the Gentries, um, so they all uh, they all know what they're doing. Know their way around their instruments. It's melodic, progressive, hard rock with a really fat bass sound, lots of burbling Hammond organ, and great guitar playing. There's key and time changes all over the place. Great vocal harmonies. Really nice keyboard and guitar interplay. And the drummer's got some great chops too. It sounds like they had rehearsed and rehearsed before recording, which is a real bonus because the songwriting is great. Yeah, there's no there's no flab on here that I can hear. Um, I think there's a couple of different lead vocalists on here, although I'm not sure. One of them, his vocals are very similar to David Byron from Your Eye Heap. Um, the highlights are probably Burden of Lies, which has stacked harmonies, very much in that Your Eye Heap, Demons and Wizards kind of way. Um, and the title track, Ship of Labour, which again really draws on that Uriah Heap sound. Um, it's not derivative, they've got their own thing going, but that is the closest comparison, that sort of Uriah Heap thing. The playing is incredibly tight throughout, and I love this album, absolutely love it. And this, in fact, it was a promo. When I got it, it had a, uh, a timing strip on the front, and I'm probably thinking, you're probably thinking, why on earth did you take that off? But I'll put a picture up here somewhere showing what the sleeve looked like when I got it and you'll understand why I removed what was left of it because it was it was tatty and shredded. Someone had obviously tried to get it off at some point and made an absolute pig's ear of it. So it was either leave it on there as it was, which looked a terrible mess, or get rid of it. I managed to get it off pretty well. Um, here's the label. It's on TMI Records, I believe. And yeah, this is one I shall be returning to again and again. And I'd, I'd been after this for years and years. And finally a copy came up in the UK. And I think the dreadful state, state someone left that timing strip in was what put other people off bidding for it because I got it for my first bid. So I was pretty pleased about that. So yeah, I want to cross off the, the never-ending want list. So that's it for now. It's a reasonably short video for me. Um, I'll try and get back with another video a lot sooner than I've managed to get this one out. But uh, yeah, that's my recent prog and psych finds, or a few of them anyway. Um, so keep on watching. I will be back soon and take care. Bye for now.